Hello and welcome everyone, and of course, sorry for the leg, um, I decided to start a little, um, a little teaser video for what is coming up, um, sorry if I haven't really been doing any videos, uh, I've been kind of busy lately, just started school and all that, um, right now I am going to do something that maybe someone has done I really can't say that if there is a person that did it or not but um it's definitely something that I've never heard anyone do so far basically um, I am going to convert minecraft into a programming language that will control external softwares maybe even as far as a actual other device or something like that. For example, I might actually be able to uh, make it so that you could control Minecraft with your iPhone or something like that. I don't know, something crazy since I am an app developer and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's actually something that I've attempted before and actually was successful, but since I was using some software that I'm wanting to keep to myself uh, during that process, I did not create a video or anything like that. Instead, I might as well start from scratch, but this time with a different software. Um, at the moment, uh, I might as well explain how I'm going to do this. Each individual computer down here has an API, or outputs a file with a certain name. Uh, basically what happens since there are receivers in the back, as you can see up here, across there are their transmitters. The receivers basically just uh, get the signal from the transmitters, which therefore goes down to here, which creates a file within their individual folder. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, each computer, each one of these computers, have a f has a folder within the save folder of this Minecraft map. Every single time you type and edit a new file, a file actually appears in each individual folder. You just have to go into the computer folder and then there will be numbers which are the IDs of each computer. And that is basically how you make it so that you have uh, various computers creating files. But actually, wait a second, I'm sorry, there's a little different thing I'm doing. Uh, instead of each individual of these computers creating a file, there's one master computer down in there that creates a file. These just simply communicate through the Wi-Fi things from the receiver of the redstone from the transmitter. Uh, just sends a message. The message is going to be the file name, which is the API which would then go into here, onto this computer, and it would display on the screen that successfully or unsuccessfully they actually created the file. Now why on earth create a file? Because you need the external software to actually read the file or know that it's there, so therefore it could do a, a command or something like that. So you're thinking, well, okay, um, I got this uh, Redstone circuit, it's really cool, it has a whole entire ALU in it, uh, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, it has a random number generator, and even with this mod, Technic mod, there's really cool redstone stuff, like logical gates and cells and stuff like that. Well, how on earth do I make my external software communicate back to my redstone circuitry? Well, that's why you have these computers up here, I call them feedbacks. Basically, the master computer will detect if there's a feedback 1 or feedback 2 file within its directory on the actual your actual computer right here. Um, if it detects a fe or uh, not FedEx <laughs> uh, feedback uh, 1, then this computer will light up its redstone in the back until that file is deleted, which usually the external software deletes it. Um, so let's just say, uh, this redstone circuitry was connected to, well, I'm sorry, this Minecraft game was connected to a compiler that read files and compiled, uh, code for a microcontroller that commu that controls a robot. Well, simply what you would do is, you would just have this <coughs> feedback computer, uh, well, let's just say the robot's moving a detects an object. Well, the object, well, detecting an object will go to the external program which is connected to the compiler and stuff like that. And then it would 
send a thing where it's like, oh, hey, uh, there's going to be an object or something in the way. So basically what happens is the robot's told to just turn through the redstone. Yes, yes, this is extremely crazy, and why on earth would I do this? It's very, very unpractical, very slow, and usually you get distracted within a game and all that. But there are two good main reasons. People that absolutely hate programming can do a hardware version on a computer by simulating logical circuits, and it is just something to do and it's fun. Just to show off, and trust me, well, actually I can't say this for sure, but I might get more than a thousand views like my other Technic video. That's a lot for me. I know I'm pretty new to the YouTube environment or the community, let's just say. So, that's basically what I've been working on. I've already done all the softwares for each computer, loaded them up and everything, got everything here all set up. I just need to make an external program, maybe a Java or AGK program, to display a sprite or a 2D uh, or a image, I meant, to just move around on a screen based on redstone circuitry here. Nothing too crazy, but just enough to uh, amuse people and hopefully for some form of entertainment or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's your teaser for today, and thank you for watching, and this is Mr. Sovar. Oh yes, and make sure to subscribe and like my videos. Follow me on Facebook at Parker's Apps. Parker's Apps. I don't know why, I just think that people don't get that right. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Parker's Apps, with the at symbol, of course. So, again, thank you for watching. Comment, share, whatever. See ya.